It's Supernatural with Sid Roth. Hidden codes have just been found in the Bible that are revolutionary and are challenging the greatest skeptics. Find out these amazing hidden messages on this edition of It's Supernatural! If it's not natural, consider it's supernatural. The code has been broken. There is no excuse for anyone to doubt that the Torah, the scriptures, the entire Bible comes from a divine authority. And the man that broke the code, a Jewish man that has spent 55 years studying the Bible, I have with me right now, Yaakov Ramsel. Yaakov, how did you break this code? Said I didn't break it. The Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, revealed His Word unto me, showing me the name of Yeshua the Messiah from Genesis 1 down through the final book of the Tanakh, of the originally called the Old Testament. As you go from page to page, from chapter to chapter, from book to book, the name of Yeshua shows up, that He is the Messiah, that He was the promised one that would come to redeem not only Israel, but the world from all their sins. Now, you, you say to me that in a hidden form, the Hebrew name Yeshua, which is Hebrew for Jesus, is revealed in from Genesis, the, the Breshis, the first book of the Breshi. Bible, all the way through. Yes, yes. Let me, let me ask you a question. There is, um, in, uh, the, in the Tanakh, in the Jewish scriptures, there is a uh, passage called, from the Jewish prophet Isaiah, written 800 years before Jesus came to earth. It's the 53rd chapter. Personally, I've read this from my Orthodox Jewish father, and he, un, even though he didn't want to believe that it was Jesus, he said, that is describing that man. It's describing Jesus. Now, uh, and anyone that would read it objectively would say it's describing Jesus. It was written 800 years before we can prove this, 800 years before Jesus came to earth. But I have talked to Orthodox rabbis and they have said, well, it's not really talking about Jesus. It's talking about the nation Israel. It's talking about the Jewish people. To be quite candid with you, Yaakov, this has been an insult to my intelligence. Yes. However, however, Everyone is entitled to their opinion. But you have found a code which through an ancient Jewish method, and, and, and the method, uh, you may be familiar with it, is called g Gematra. And Gematra is where they study the numerical value of every Hebrew word. But you went in a little different approach than, than this ancient uh, traditional Jewish way. How did you break the code? Well, the, the Lord revealed to me that what the Hebrew word shalav means equidistance or equally spaced, equally spaced, like two items, one item from another, or three items, like three rungs on a ladder. Well, this is true with that. It is also true in His Word. The Word of God from the book of Genesis, Brashit, all the way to the final last letter in the book, is equally distributed by the Holy Spirit. And so if one understands how this works, then you can see what God is saying behind the scenes. So in Isaiah 53, which we have been taught that this represents Israel, I always had a problem with this because how could a nation that would be destroyed, completely destroyed, alleviate the sins of all the other nations? This could not be. This could not be, for Israel has been persecuted for over 3,500 years. It has never alleviated sin, has never washed away sin. So it must be speaking of a man. And where it says in Isaiah 53, 5, it says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. The beatings and the stripes of Israel never healed me. It never healed anybody. As a matter of fact, it wounded them. Yeah, but, but, but I'm interested in this numerical pattern. Okay. Explain that to but me. But then you come right down to verse 10. 
and you come to where it says, he shall prolong his days. The Hebrew word for this is yurik, which means he shall prolong. Starting with his second yod in that word. Which the second is the, Hebrew letter, which is a yod. Which is the yod. Okay. That is the tenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The second yod in that word, counting every 20 letters from left to right. So every 20th letter that's equally spaced, every 20th letter makes a statement from the first party. It says, Yeshua Shmi, which means Jesus is my name. So now we have the name. Wait, 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 wait. you're going too fast. It's, you're telling me every, how many letters? Every 20th letter. Let me see if I understand this right. Yaakov, you, f you start with one letter in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, a Hebrew letter in the Hebrew scriptures, and you, go, you count how many letters now? 20? From that yod, you count 20 letters. All right, you count 20 letters, and then you write the next, uh, the next, next letter. letter, and then you count another 20 letters yes, and write the next, and it forms a, a, a Hebrew sentence. And what is the Hebrew sentence it forms? In Hebrew, it would be Yeshua Shmi. And Yeshua Shmi in English means? Jesus is my name. Jesus is my name. Yes, so we have the name of the Messiah. The How could anyone say it's Israel if it says in Hebrew, the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, Jesus is my name. Do you realize how revolutionary this is? Yes, I do. How could any rabbi anywhere not believe <laughs> that Jesus is the Messiah? This was written 800 years before That's he came right. to earth. That proves that the inerrant word of God is from God. But wait a second. The ancient rabbis had this system. Why didn't they see it? Well, there is a scripture in Romans, the new Brikadasha, the new covenant, that says that Israel's eyes would be blinded in part until the end. But now what is happening? The eyes of many, many non-believing Jewish people, our people, are being opened right now by the Holy Spirit. You see, before they were blinded, they did not see these things. They could not see them. If some did by accident, find the name of Yeshua, the Messiah. They, they were too ashamed or they were afraid to tell people because of persecution from their own people. From our own people would persecute our own people. This was wrong. But now is the time of restitution of all things. The time of restitution is now. And God is revealing his word, not only to the, the Gentile nations, the non-Jewish people, but to Israel itself, to his his chosen people, which is Israel. Well, the thing that is so overwhelming to me is that there are 300 precise predictions in the Jewish prophecies, in the Jewish scriptures, 300. And every one proves that Yeshua, that's Hebrew for Jesus, is the Jewish Messiah. But not only do they now prove it, but based on these hidden messages, they, every one of them says the Hebrew name of Jesus, Yeshua. I mean, give me a break. How much proof do you need? We have to take a break right now. Speaking of breaks, be right back after this. Stay tuned as Yaakov reveals the mind-boggling odds against a secret message being hidden in the scriptures. I'm talking to Yaakov Ramsal. This is so astounding. You cannot be an atheist anymore. That's a fact. You cannot afford to even be an agnostic anymore. An agnostic says is, I honestly don't know if there's a God. But if you just pay attention to what is being said right now, if you really want the truth, the only reason, there is only one reason why you would be an atheist or an agnostic, and that is you're not interested in truth. But if you're fair-minded, if you want to think for yourself, I urge you to follow the facts. Now, Yaakov Ramzo, you showed me a hidden mass message in a text written 800 years before Jesus came to earth, Isaiah the Jewish prophet in the Jewish scriptures in the 53rd chapter clearly said that one would come that would not be recognized by our people, but by his wounds we would be healed. And a hidden message in that which you revealed is, let, let me read this exactly, Yeshua, Hebrew for Jesus, is my name. Yeshua is my name. That's awesome. What is, here's what I want to know. Was this, I want to be candid with you, was this a coincidence? What is the probability of this occurring 
in code in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah. When we look at this scientifically, Sid, the statisticians have analyzed just this one, this one area of prophecy with the name of Yeshua Shmi in it, Jesus is my name. And to their final deductions, they figured approximately 50 quadrillion to one. The chances of it happening by just happenstance is 50 quadrillion to one. Help, help me out. Quadrillion. How many zeros? <laughs> I mean, I have problems with a million. A quadrillion. I, don't, I can't well, even picture that. Uh, you, you can write 15 zeros down on a blackboard and add 50 to it, and that's your answer. Did you hear that? 15 zeros on a blackboard. Put 50 in front of it. Try doing that in your checkbook. <laughs> the odds are 50 quadrillion to, to one. To one. That it Which would means it's by not chance. a probability. It's not it, a probability. It is not a probability. It's an absolute science. It's uh, closer to absolute science than you sitting here or you, me sitting here. There is more truth in that than me even existing, and we know I exist because I'm sitting here talking to you. How many times have you personally, through your research, found in code the name of Jesus in his Hebrew form, Yeshua, in the Jewish scriptures? From the very first book of Genesis, starting with the first Yod in Bereshit, which means in the beginning, there his name starts to appear, right there and counting an equidistant sequence, which is called shalav, over and over, not just one time from that point, but all the way through Genesis and all the way through Exodus, overlapping from one book to the next and overlapping to finally we finish the Torah and we go into the Tanakh and then we go to the, uh, the Psalms and so forth and it continues. His name is called the Word of God from the very beginning to the end. In Proverbs, Yes. There is a, like a riddle that King oh, Solomon yes. gives us. That's awesome. There. And, and it, it, it's, uh, I like to, to uh, play a game with this riddle. Very who good. has ascended to high? Who has descended? Who has created all of the universe? What is his name? And the answer is, if you ask someone that's a mensch, that means a human, they'll yes. say, God created everything. And then it says, and what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? What did you find in that okay. in Proverbs? What is so interesting about this in the original Mesoteric text? That's Proverbs, the 30th chapter, the yes, fourth verse. Yes, and the fourth verse. In the original Hebrew, it says, What is my name and what is my son's name? Surely you know. Hmm. Not can one tell. Surely. It says, Surely you know. That is the Hebrew word there. And that's the true translation of that. But what's so interesting, in the word me, which means who has ascended and who has formed the foundations of the world. From that yod in that particular word, counting every 22 letters now, mm -hmm. 22 letters in the alphabet, you count every 22 letters the same way we did in Isaiah 53. And you come up with another phrase. It's Yeshua Shai, which means Jesus is the gift. <gasps> yes, and that Jesus is, also, is the gift. Also, Wait, no, 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 yes. stop, 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 <laughs> stop. Calm down. You're just getting too excited, Yaakov. Do you realize what he just said? He asked the riddle. The answer is God. Then the, the, then the Jewish uh, uh, writer in Proverbs states, what is his son's name? And then in code, it answers the riddle. Surely you know, in the Hebrew, Yeshua, Hebrew for Jesus, the gift. Let me say that again. Do you understand the significance of this? This overwhelming evidence. So you found it in these two places. What about something that is astounding to me? I, as a Jew, Yaakov, I cannot believe in the Koran for one reason. Yes. The Tanakh does not predict a Koran is coming. I can't, I can't be a, um, uh, a, a, um, uh, of any group rather, rather than list the names. I can't be a Mormon. 
The Book of Mormonism is not predicted in the Jewish scriptures. I right. can only be what my Jewish scriptures predict. That's right. The only reason that I personally, as a Jew, believe in Jesus is the Jewish scriptures say in Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, the 31st verse, Behold, the days come in which I shall make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not according to the covenant I made with their fathers, which they violated in Egypt, but under this covenant, there'll be two things. Number one, I, God, will remember their sins no more. And number two, they will know me. Now, I must believe in the new covenant because my Jewish scriptures tell me I must do it. As a Jew, I have no choice. But now, your research in this book, Yeshua, the Hebrew factor, <laughs> overwhelming. Tell, tell me what you found in code. What is so interesting about this? is that the Lord said that he would write his laws upon our heart and that he was speaking to the house of Judah and he was speaking to the house of Israel. It's interesting that he would mention these two names, Judah and Israel, because we know that Judah is out of Israel, but they're like separate here. But you need to go to Ezekiel, 37th chapter, when it says in the last days that the two trees that are separated, one is the house of Judah, Beit Yehuda, one is the house of Israel, Beit Israel, which are the ten tribes that were separated from the two, which was the house of Judah, that he would bring the two sticks and make them one, when he was ready to make the new covenant. Now we go back to Jeremiah 31, and we see Brik Karasha, which is the new covenant that he would make with us, and write it upon our hearts, and in there. It's the most beautiful thing from the Mem uh, and Brik Karasha, I mean the, the Chet in Brik Karasha, counting every 99th letter, spells Mashiach. He's the one that will ratify the new covenant. Uh, hold that yeah. thought, and don't you dare go away. Did you hear that? The new covenant that the Jewish prophet said would come, it says Jesus would ratify it. Oy vey, what more do you need? Don't go away, we'll be right back. In a moment, Yaakov will reveal the true Jewish sacrifice hidden in the scriptures. One of the most important, here, let me let you hold on to the book. One of the most important, that book must be very precious to you. It, it, it reflects is. so much work on your part. Uh, I, I, let me explain a few things. I knew that his name was in there, Sid. And I couldn't prove it until I learned enough Hebrew to prove it. And as the Spirit of the Lord moved, he would direct me to a certain passage. He would tell me where the passage was. I would be outside praying, and I'd come running into the house, and my wife, Yaffa, would be sitting there, and I said, the Lord has just showed me something. I must look it up in the Hebrew. I'd open the Hebrew Scriptures, and there would be the name of Yeshua over and over and over. And I just thank God that it, this is his work. This is not my work. And I give Jesus all the credit. Yaakov, one of the major tenets of Judaism is found in the Torah, in the book of Leviticus. Yes. It says, I have given the blood upon the altar as atonement for sin. It is the blood that makes atonement for sin. And we Jews, most of us don't know today, but when the temple was destroyed, we could not have the Jewish way of forgiveness of sin. It's, it says no clearly sacrifice. in Leviticus that it is the blood, nothing but the blood of an unblemished lamb that makes atonement for sin. So that is clear. No temple, that means no animal sacrifice. That's no right. animal sacrifice, that means no forgiveness of sin. So what the rabbis did is they had one of two choices. They could have recognized, as many did, I might add, and many Jewish people are coming to faith today, they, they could have recognized Yeshua as the Messiah. Certainly God would not leave his ancient Jewish people in the lurch. Or they could have invented a new form of Judaism called rabbinical Judaism. We know what many of our people did, unfortunately, and yes. today our people don't even think for themselves. They say whatever the rabbi says, That's tradition, exactly right. fiddler on the roof, how sad because it's the difference between you know, knowing the, God right. or just the, believing He exists. The scripture, the Tanakh says that everyone shall know Him for themselves. They don't need to rely on anybody else and everyone will know Him one day. However, what's interesting when you're talking about the blood sacrifice 
and talking about the anointing of the high priest in the book of Leviticus or Vayikra in Hebrew. And you go to the 17th to the 21st chapter in that area explains all these things, talking about the blood sacrifice, talking about the anointing of the high priest, the Kohen Gadol, the high priest, which was Aaron, Moses' brother at the time. And here, encoded in that message there, in that beautiful scripture, it says, Hendam Yeshua, and it means, behold, the blood of Jesus. Oh, you realize what you've just said? Yes. Do you realize what Yaakov just said? I mean, if you don't, keep listening, I'm going to tell you, in the Torah, in the book of Leviticus, which says you must have an animal sacrifice in the temple, it states, behold the blood of Jesus. Mm. Let me say that again. Behold the blood of Jesus. Yaakov, you're a Jewish man like myself. There are many Jewish people that would say, Meshumad. Yes. Traitor. That's exactly right. Give up this Jesus. Come back to our community. What would you say? I'd say, no, there's no turning back. Once you've met him face to face, once you have an encounter with this wonderful Savior, you know, Jesus was more Jewish than anyone because he was kosher Jew. He was complete. He was 100% without sin. He was the design that God had designed for us to be like. And Yeshua come to fulfill it for us. He was God manifested in the flesh. Yeshua is the Son of God. There's no question. How can in I code, turn back? In code, have you found oh, Yeshua yes. is the Son of God? I also found Ben Yeshua. I found... Son of... Son of uh, uh, Yeshua the Son. Yeshua the Son, okay. And then I f found, uh, taking a book of uh, uh, Ruth, Sefer Ruth, the book of Ruth, Ruth. Uh, where it talks about Boaz as the kinsman redeemer. In there, every 12th letter, notice 12, 12 tribes represents right. 12. Every 12th letter in the first portion of the book of Ruth spells Melech Yeshua, it means King Jesus. Uh, there he is. <laughs> Listen, I can't think of a better way. <laughs> King, in the book of Ruth, yes. where the Gentiles were grafted in, because this That's is not exactly just a Jewish right. thing, That's where the right. Gentiles were grafted in, it says, King Yeshua. King Yeshua. Oh, wow. King Yeshua. How about you? Is Yeshua, Jesus, your king? You see, God so loves the whole world. He started with his ancient Jewish people to reveal his Messiah. And his Jew ancient Jewish people were faithful to share the good news with the Goyim, with the Gentiles, as was predicted in Torah. A lot of people say Jews should not proselytize. Jews were created to tell the whole world about God. Whether you're Jewish or Gentile, isn't there something more to live for? Isn't there something more to life? If you really want to know God, know Him, then I want you to pray a prayer from a sincere heart with me right now. Hallelujah. Repeat this prayer out loud after me right now. Say, Dear Jesus, out loud, right? That's you. Dear Jesus, please forgive me for every sin I've ever committed. With your help, I turn from them. Jesus, I believe you died for my sins. I accept the blood of Jesus. And now that I am clean, I make Yeshua my Lord. And I ask you, Lord Yeshua, to come inside of me. Jesus, come inside of me. Take over my life. I love you, God. Amen. I'll tell you something. If you said that prayer and meant it, the Messiah of Israel is living inside of you. Find out more about him. Start reading the scriptures. Come to experience what shalom really is. Come to experience the Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace, as I have 
and as Yaakov has, yes. and as the whole world will Amen. one day. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>